You know how we do hypothesis testing for like means and proportions? You did that for your projects. There's also hypothesis testing for standard deviation and variances, and that is not on the AP test, so I didn't teach it to you. So in that case, there would be lots of left-tailed and right-tailed tests and stuff like that, but we're not doing that, so you, these will all be two-tailed. Okay, so we're drawing two tails. Um, obviously, my picture isn't great because those areas should be the same. Not necessarily the same amount or over, but the area inside should be the same, but whatever. It's just a sketch. Um, okay, so ours is alpha is 0 0.01. So what percent should be in each tail? If together they're 0 0.01, then what percent should be in each tail? 0 0.005. Okay, look up. This area is 0 0.005 over here, and this area, since it reads to the right, is 0 0.995 over here. And then you're going to look on your chi-square distribution table, and you're going to look for the 0 0.995 and the 0 0.005 under 4. which is point, uh, 0.207 and point, or 14.86. Definitely not like a symmetric number. Um, there are no negative numbers in a chi-squared test. But those are our rejection regions now, and our null is still in the middle, so that stuff is all the same. Okay, hold on. Ooh, I'm wrong about this. I'm sorry, guys. It is a one-tail test. Okay, I haven't done this one in a while. The stats is getting hard, so we're going to have to fix this. My apologies. Okay, if you need white out, let me know. Do you need white out? Do you want to come grab some? In that drawer right there, there's extra whiteout. Anybody else need whiteout, or do you guys have pencils? Okay, sorry. Mistakes are made. So I had this realization moment where I was like, hold on. You know how I said that, like, um, you would think it'd be two-tailed because things on the right side. Um, how things, uh, like, zeros in the middle. Remember that? Like zeros in the middle, so things outrageously wrong on the left or outrageously wrong on the right. But in this case, there actually is zero is all the way on the left here. Remember how I said there's no negatives? So the closer it is to zero, the more accurate it is. So like over here is more accurate. Thank you for being patient. I'm sorry that I messed this up. which means instead it's 0 .01 here because it's a right tail test. So actually all of these will be right tail tests, all of them. This, by the way, is harder than most things that you will see in stats in college. I didn't do this in stats in college, but they do test it to you on the AP test. Isn't that fun? Okay. So 0 0.01 instead, we're still at 4. So now go to 0 0.01 on your chart and to 4, and you should get 13.277. So over here, it's going to be not accurate. Like, it won't match. There's no match over here. And over here would be like a perfect match. Sorry I messed that up. Do you guys understand me now? Yeah. Okay. So like zero is here, okay? And 13.277 is out here. Those are just measures of how close you are to accurate. And zero is perfectly accurate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because we can't just say, since we have so many different ones, we could say, hey, this one's below or this one's above. 
but instead it's how a measure of how far all of them are off. And if they were all exactly on, it would be zero, which would be over here, which is what we want. And over here is not acceptable. So this is like the rejection region over here. Okay. Um, all right. So the next thing we do, um, this was six, five through six, I guess. Um, seven is we find the test statistic and sketch the sampling distribution. Okay. So seven... Uh, we've already sketched it, so we don't need to do that. Um, chi squared, it looks like uh, the Greek letter chi looks like an X with like a kind of a curvy. Like if you just make your first uh, line for the X kind of like a curvy one and then slash through it. Um, and it is a summation of all of the observed minus expected squared over um, the expected. So, the first one is 61 minus 72, and then we square it, and then divide by 72. Look at the data above this. Do you guys see where I'm getting these numbers? And since it's a summation, we're going to add it to every single one. We're going to add these in. Next one is going to be uh, 42 minus 60 squared over 60. And then 112 minus 105 squared over 105. 29 minus 18 squared over 18. 56 minus 45 squared over 45. Why do you think you square all of these? The expected minus the observed, or observed minus the expected. Yeah, it doesn't matter if they're positive or negative. It just matters how far they are off, right? And so the square will take care of all those positives and negatives. So this is like how far it's off squared, and that'll take care of positives and negatives, and then divided by what you expected, which will be like a percentage. So, all right, so try to put this in your calculator. All right, here's the first one. Take a look. See that? This will work by itself as long as you have those parentheses on top. And then if you put a plus, you can just write them all in a row. You don't need to worry about extra parentheses or something weird. Imagine taking what this class would be like if you didn't have a calculator. <laughs> 